Dorklair! Welcome to another Dorklair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Shadow Knight Batman. This is a variant of the Supreme Knight Batman, a review of which I just did a couple weeks ago. So there'll be a lot of repeat here in terms of the accessories, but there is a lot of new stuff too. It's not just a straight up, um, you know, recoloring. There is a lot new. This was the MDX exclusive that went up on Batman Day. I'm somewhat assuming this might have been a New York Comic Con exclusive. Not quite sure about that yet. Uh, we'll see how many exclusives come out for New York. But um, yeah, so pretty awesome figure. I am actually super pumped. And I know it's easy to get carried away with like, you know, kind of saying the next thing is the best thing. But Man, this thing is so complete. There's just so much going on with this figure. Um, I'm I'm pretty thrilled with it. It's just an awesome release. Super detailed. Ton of accessories. I mean, it's got everything that the Supreme Knight comes with and then everything that the PX Supreme Knight comes with, as far as I can tell. So it's almost like a double version. It's got the best of both worlds on those. Plus, it's got this all-black uh, stealth Batman look to it. Um, just an awesome, awesome release. I know it's hard to find now, but hopefully, you know, as people get these in hand, we'll get a little more uh, of a market flood and maybe it'll be a little bit easier to get them. Um, currently just waitlist and sold out right now, but rad, rad figure. So let's get into this review. Starting off with a quick look at the packaging, your standard uh, MDX package, the smaller box. It's got the sticker up top here. This one, I don't really love the back. Um, usually they have some really neat artwork going on on the back, but it's really just a photo of the figure with a filter sort of on there. Um, and I gotta say, if you can see the top here, this thing is like got 10 trays. It's so packed, all the stuff that they packed into this thing. This is like even empty, like even without any of the pieces in there. <laughs> this like, this package is just like, it feels like a brick. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the standard packaging and it's got kind of that glossy finish to some of the parts and the sticker on there. So standard um, exclusive package. And then here we have a nice close up of the primary head sculpt there. You'll notice that it's not actually solid black. Here and there, you have some sort of gunmetal, silvery kind of panels. Um, the belt and the gauntlets and things have that kind of finish to them mixed in with that black. So it gives it really a, a really kind of neat look and adds a little dynamic coloring to it. This is one of three bat symbols he comes with. Uh, this is my preferred one. And I just want to compare it. I assumed it was going to be the same as the one in the Sovereign Knight, but it's actually different. So you can see there it's a little, um, I guess, sort of like stretched out more. Um, I actually really like the shape of this one. It might be the bat symbol that I like most out of all the Mezco Trilogy uh, Batman figures. I think it's my favorite one. And then you'll notice that the suit is much different than the regular Supreme Knight. It has a similar overlay kind of thing to the other Sovereign Knights. Like for example, this one, which is I think my favorite one. I think before this Batman, this was my favorite Mezco Batman. This is the Onyx. So it's got a similar kind of thing there with those overlay panels. Another one that has that is the All Black from New York last year, and then also the Sovereign Knight, um, the PX, the blue one. Those all have this similar thing. And if you look at the regular Sovereign, that regular Sovereign's got a unique kind of thing where it's, it's one big, almost slightly looser suit, which I really enjoy. I like that being sort of, sort of like a different kind of thing they're doing here. And in some ways I do sort of wish they did it for this, but man, this just looks, it looks so good. Um, you know, if you didn't get this one and you do have the PX on pre-order, I believe the suit is going to be very similar, even though the bat symbol is going to be different. And then, um, you know, it's all the same sculpt work in the gauntlets, in the belt, in the hands, except here we have some silver accents, black and silver going on. Um, it's, it's, it's very much black looking to me. Like it's very dark. It doesn't feel silver. It feels gunmetal. Um, so it's, you know, I think I've seen some photos where the lighting just tricks it and makes it look way more silvery than it is. Um, it's a, it's a subtle thing. It's more gunmetal than silver in my opinion, but there you have the, you know, the same boots and everything, just all those little details painted in there and 
fantastic. It's just an awesome looking figure. The back of the belt. If you saw my other video, you know that I removed the belt on that one, but that was sort of an accident. It came unglued. Um, I'm not going to do that with this one because this figure is so exclusive. I don't really want to do anything that actually damages it. So yeah, I mean, until I maybe mess around with and try to do like a magnet thing on the other Supreme, then I'm not even going to mess with this one. I'm just going to leave the belt on there because I'm pretty sure like the other one, it's glued. But man, this figure looks so cool. And bringing in a few other figures to see how he looks in comparison. Now, I don't have the blackout versions of Sovereign Knight or Ascending Knight. I had the Sovereign Knight one, but I ended up selling that. I just, at some point, I just, four was too many of any one Batman. So I ended up selling that and sticking with the Onyx because that's really my favorite one. Um, but there you have the Onyx and the Sovereign in a black color. A couple other old man Bruce Batman figures. On the left, the Supreme Knight. And on the right, we have the Mafex Dark Knight Returns. A couple other Black Ops type figures. On the left is the Classified Snake Eyes, and on the right is the Gold Skull Ninja with the Diabolique head. Getting a little color in the mix. On the left, we have the Mezco Clown Prince Joker with a custom jacket. And on the right, we have the Marvel Legends uh, Green Goblin from the Retro Wave. And just a couple other slightly bigger guys in black. On the left is a Mythic Legions Kit Bash, and on the right is a movie realization Kylo Ren head swap with one of the um, Bag of Skulls. Skulls that I painted up and I kind of like, I don't know, I threw this together thinking it was a little bit of a Doc Nocturnal kind of thing there. For accessories, let's start with the cape. So just like the other Batman uh, Supreme Knight, you can just pop the head right off and then the cape comes with it. Then you can swap the other cape right on there. Um, the one with the wire, you got to sort of mess with it to get it to sit flush because you want that wire in just sort of, just sort of the right spot. But um, yeah, there you have that wired cape and it gives you a lot of fun posing options with the wired cape there. And I'll probably just leave the cape off for now and let's take a look at the chest emblem. So speaking of magnets, we can pop the chest emblem off. And one issue is that you're gonna get imprints because these magnets are pretty strong and this type of material is gonna take an imprint. Like if you press on it for long enough, it's gonna take an imprint. So, um, you know, you might wanna like I don't know, maybe you can kind of line the inside of this with something, maybe tape it up a little bit, but um, it's definitely leaving some imprints there. So that's something to be aware of. You might want to kind of pick your poison and stick with it because, you know, and then say you pop this one on there, you might still kind of see those marks and you want to be careful. Like you don't want to be shifting it around while it's on there, maybe like catch an edge and then have it just like sitting on there and pressing on a piece of a little slight fold or something like that. But Here's that second one. Um, so yeah, I'm, when I switch them and move them, I'm not sliding. I'm just lifting and moving it and then lift and move it again. It might be slightly off centered, but you know, just a little bit of work. And the nice thing is if you got a crooked <laughs> emblem, you can just fix it. You can make it not crooked by straightening it out. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so here's the oval one, which is kind of cool. It's all beat up. It almost looks like a piece of armor on his chest. And then finally, we have the biggest, chunkiest one, which kind of has that more like Dark Knight Returns, like big, thick bat symbol. Um, and that one definitely has that armor feel to it. Continuing with accessories, let's take a look at some of these other head sculpts. I mean, he is loaded with heads. He comes with five different heads. So he's got this one, which is the same sculpt as the regular Supreme Knight. He's got the angry face, gritting teeth one from Supreme Knight. And I, I do think this is one of the... Um, this is one of the ones that they did a little bit of a better job. Oftentimes the gritting teeth figures, they don't look great. They look weird or creepy and we'll get to that one in a minute. And then I had to turn the light down a little bit because, um, this head is a much brighter color than the rest of the body, but you can see, um, this is the old man Bruce head and it looks pretty awesome. I really like this head sculpt and how the silver hair looks and everything. It's a great sculpt and does absolutely look like an aged up version of the previous ones. And then we have a long-eared version of the head sculpt. So that's pretty cool that we're getting a long ear version, which I think is the, the type of head that comes with the, um, the PX Blue. And finally, we get the I enjoy beating you up um, looking head. I mean, this is a really creepy smile. And I don't know, some, some angles it looks pretty cool. And it looks, it looks kind of rad and just really just enjoying getting the job done and then in other angles it looks kind of weird like he's like he's nervous or something he's like ah, i don't know but of the heads he comes with i think this is my preferred head but 
I gotta say, if I were gonna commit to a head sculpt, the Sovereign Knight head is my favorite and it looks awesome. For accessories, he comes with a bunch of hands. He's got a pair of gripping hands. He's got a pair of action hands. He's got the two different trigger finger hands, one for the grapple gun and one for the equalizer. And then he's got the gun for cradling the barrel of the equalizer. And then he's got one more gripping hand, um, which will grip things, but it's also got the finger separated so you can take the batarangs and like thread them through the fingers like that. So he can be holding a bunch of batarangs. And then this is one of the two different types of small batarangs he comes with. So this one has two different colors, silver and black, love it. It's got some scratches and, um, you know, like sculpted weathering in there. And it comes with five of that one. And then it comes with five of these sort of stockier ones. And really neat, it's got a three pack of each of those types. He's got that same melee batarang type uh, bladed weapon that the other one came with. And it's got that hinge here where you can swing the blade over and then it turns into sort of like a hatchet or you know, some sort of like pointed blade weapon. And then probably my favorite accessory he comes with is this huge, um, I mean, you can see the size of it. It's a huge batarang. It's really cool. I like that thing. And the other Batman didn't come with this one. It came with a different large one, I believe. Quick look at the grapple gun. Grapple gun has three different pieces. Grappling hook that's closed. One that's open, about to fire. And he's got the typical one with a... Um, with a rope on it that I'm not even gonna bother to pull out. Finally, for weapons, he has this um, equalizer. So, giant rifle for taking out bad guys. And something I was not expecting is the, like, Ninja Gomez smoke effect that came with, you know, in various different colors with all the other Ninja Gomez. And you can kind of see, uh, you know, changing its location to the light. It will reflect and catch and do things with the light. It is, these are super cheapo. Um, they do feel very thin. And if you look on the other side, it's, it's you know, it's, it feels very cheap, but they do look nice. They kept, kept the light really nice. The sculpt is good. And, you know, it's almost like he's got like this uh, smoke bomb thing going off behind him. So that's pretty cool. Last but not least, he comes with the five inch Mezco peg stand. It's got these bat symbol right on there to match the one, the primary one on his chest. And then he's got the flight stand as well. All right, for articulation up in the head, he can look up. And you got to sort of push down on the neck in order to, to move it around or just take the head off and articulate it and then put it back on. Look down that much, side to side, um, up in that upper torso. You get a decent amount of sort of crunch back and forward and twist. And then there's a bit at the waist as well, twist and crunch. Um, the arms can swing up and out and he can bring his arm up quite a bit. And there's a butterfly joint. so. He can come back a little bit and then forward as well. Twist at the upper bicep, double jointed elbow. Not a ton of range though, because of all that armor. And then there is a twist at the gauntlet. The wrist can spin around and hinge as usual. The leg can kick forward quite a bit and it can kick back a decent amount. It can twist, he can do the splits double jointed knees. There's a twist at the boot. This one actually twists a little bit better on mine. Um, I'm sure if I work this, it'll get better. And then the ankles are interesting. Like the ankles actually have a lot of range considering the chunkiness of the boots. I think a lot of people aren't realizing that you can get a pretty wide stance with it if you really sort of work that joint. Let me get it into the stance. And so he can be flat footed about that far out, which is not too bad. Um, and if you take a, if you take a close up look, you can see he's got a decent little bit of anchor ankle rocker there. Nothing to write home about, but it's more than it seems at first. At first I didn't think it was going to rock at all because it just felt like this. But once you sort of start working that angle, you can get a decent amount of rocker going. And then his foot can point down about this far. And the same thing about pointing up is you can get a little bit more if you kind of like wiggle it back and forth. Decent articulation for a big, muscular, ripped, jacked dude. Um, he, he moves really well. Like a lot of Mezcos, just fun to, to pose around and mess with and swap out all the crazy parts. Lots of good stuff going on with this figure. Thanks for watching my video. And until next time, may the force be with you. Follow me.